Hello, and welcome to Not Just Books, the monthly program brought to you by the Williamson County Public Library. We have a terrific show for you today, so don't miss a second. The library is part of the Williamson County community in unique, educational, and entertaining ways, and we are thrilled to tell you about it once a month <coughs> on our television show. In our Your World segment, we have with us Gordon Hampton, Director of Williamson County Parks and Recreation. He'll be here to discuss what's going on right next door to the main library. Have you seen all the amounts of dirt being moved and the huge trucks? Well, Gordon will talk to us about some exciting new things happening there for the people of Williamson County. In our What's Hot in Books segment, the library is privileged to present a terrific program for local writers on March 19th. The event is called Best Practices of Self-Publishing. Local author and philosopher Bill Peach will be with us, as well as Margaret Brown, Technical Services Librarian. And they will talk about this unique and terrific program. In our Save the Date segment, we will feature Williamson County United Way's VITA program. The library is proud to participate in this wonderful community event. Yes, it does have to do with taxes, something no one really likes to talk about, but the United Way can help heal the pain. They will be here to explain soon. Also, last but not least, we have a special event segment featuring Thelma Battles, Williamson County African American History and Photographs, a 20 year retrospective, 1996 to 2016, and Jason Gavin, Special Collections Librarian with the Williamson County Library will be here to discuss it. We have a very busy show today, so sit back, relax, and stay with us. Welcome back. In our Your World segment today, we are happy to have with us Gordon Hampton, who is the director of our Williamson County Parks and Rec Department. Gordon, thank you for joining us Lord, today. Thank you. thank you for having me. I'm glad to be here. Well, I tell you, we could talk forever about all the good things Parks and Rec are doing. You guys just do an amazing job. But today we're kind of focusing on what's going to happen next door at the library. There's been a lot of construction going on, a lot of people are asking. So tell us a little bit about the Enrichment Center and the theater. Be glad to because you're right, people are going to start going up and down Columbia Highway and, and seeing something come out of the ground. Right now they see a lot of dirt, but, the, <laughs> uh, but we're real proud of the fact that the commission decided to fund a, a, the Enrichment Center and the Performing Arts Center. Uh, we're going to be excited to be your neighbor and to finish off the wonderful Academy Park campus. Um, so what you're going to see as the building comes up out of the ground, the Enrichment Center is designed to provide programs for seniors. Um, it will take the place of the J.L. Clay Center that's currently been serving mm -hmm. the needs of seniors in Franklin for years and years. So um, once this facility is finished, then all the folks from J.L. Clay will move in there, along with seniors from all over the, the county that want to come in. It's going to be very exciting. Uh, then in the evenings, when the seniors are out of there, then we're going to be uh, using that facility for, to promote the arts, the performing arts, the visual arts, the fine arts. Um, we'll have everything in there, Dolores, from uh, exercise classes to music lessons to dance classes. Uh, there'll be a huge banquet room in there. Um, you know, the building itself is just going to be incredible. And I think what, the best thing we could do is to let more people know about what's going on at the building. We could bring the layout and put it in the library. Oh, I think that's a great idea. So that way everybody can look in there and mm -hmm. see what the rooms are going to be dedicated to and that sort of stuff. So that's pretty much the, the general overview of the Enrichment Center. Performing Arts Center is, uh, we're really excited about it. The old Coverdale building, which um, started out on the BGA campus as a gymnasium, mm -hmm. is being converted into a performance center. Mm -hmm. And it'll be 300 seats, and it's going to be as state-of-the-art as we can make it. Uh, we are so excited about the having a home for our wonderful Starbright players. Um, we're going to delve into and work with a lot of the local uh, theater groups, mm -hmm. uh, Studio 10, Pool Type Players. You know, all groups are going to be welcome to come in and take advantage of this wonderful facility. So, once again, uh, this is just something to round out this uh -huh. campus in the heart of downtown Franklin. It's very exciting. Um, 
And it's kind of, I kind of look at the Enrichment Center portion as kind of a J.L. Clay reboot where they, you can do a lot more mm. with this new facility than you could at the Clay Center. Tell us a little bit about that. Where's going to be some offerings that, that seniors don't have now? Well, you know, they do so many wonderful things over there in such a small amount of space that you're right, J.L. Clay reboot and then some. Um, a lot of the things that they're doing that are so successful, we're going to bring them over. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll continue to do uh, a lot of the programs that they currently have in their repertoire of things to do, but we're going to add to that. Uh, you know, there will be more of a fitness element there. Uh, we'll have group fitness areas. Uh, we'll have fitness equipment in there, mm -hmm. such as treadmills and some strength and conditioning equipment, things that they don't have room for in their uh, current facility. We're also going to incorporate more of the uh, music and dance into daily oh, activities. That's fun. And so the other thing that we're excited about is by having, you know, as close proximity as we are to the library, that they go back and forth and visit all the buildings every mm -hmm. day. We want to get them out walking, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, so they just don't stay in that one building. We want them to explore the campus and do things. That's what's exciting is about is having all of these facilities so close by that it's going to be uh, nice to be able to walk from one place to another and share resources and what have you. But um, what about um, the theater? Now, school groups going to use this as well as Studio 10 or other professional I don't really, yeah, I don't really see at this time the school groups using it simply because, you know, as, as you know, being uh, going to, and attending the county commission meetings, you know, the Commission is doing a good job of providing the theaters now at all the schools. Mm -hmm. So I think with the, the schools having their own theaters, you know, what you're going to see there is more of a community theater, mm -hmm. you know, not school-based. And, you know, our Star Bright Players is an award-winning uh, children's theater program mm -hmm. that's been around for, our, for 20 years. Mm -hmm. and we've been getting a lot of recognition here lately because one of our players is now, uh, was a student at Renaissance High School and she has moved to California. To, oh, wow. uh, to actually be, uh, uh, to, in, to take her career to another level. They had a, a really nice article in the paper about her the other day. Oh, and the good. very first thing she said was, I wouldn't be here without the Starbright players. <laughs> That's excellent. So, you know, so once again, it's going to be community theater. Yeah. And anybody that has an interest in that type of stuff, we'll have programs for all levels. Yeah. And uh, it'll be very exciting. Very exciting. And thank you again, Gordon, for coming and talking to us today. Well, I'm glad to I be here. Look it. forward to being your neighbor. Yeah, me too. Look forward to it. We'll be right back. Welcome back. In our What's Hot in Books segment, I'm very pleased to have with us Margaret Brown, Technical Services Librarian with Williamson County Public Library, and local author and philosopher Bill Peach. Thank you so much for being with us today. Margaret, Tell us a little bit about the author event on March 19th. Oh, we are very excited about it. We are having a whole day of uh, various kinds of instruction for people who are interested in self-publishing their own books. And it is an all-day event. Lunch is going to be provided. And um, the Foundation, Winston County Library Foundation is sponsoring it. And so we're very, we are, we're very, very excited about it. Um, Bill, tell us why such, this is such a good program for local writers. Well, the trend is to self-publishing, but that's a hard thing to define because there are ways you can publish a book totally by yourself, but usually you have to be involved with, with a publisher. But, um, it also includes the whole concept from writing all the way to marketing, mm -hmm. but how to self-publish is what's really important. Margaret, we're going to be taking the writer from the beginning of the process to the end. So tell us a little bit about the workshops that's going to be going on during that day. Well, in the morning we're going to have four sessions. The first one will be on actual writing. That will be done by Sarah J. Henry, who did such a great workshop for us last year. She's an award-winning mystery writer. Um, then we're going to be talking about working with an editor. Mm -hmm. That's a very important part of 
publishing or self-publishing. You just have to have somebody else tell you what That's what right. about it. Yeah. Um, then we're going to be talking about book design. You, it's more than just uploading your Word document to to somewhere. There's a lot more involved than that. And we're going to have um, someone from Ingram um, Lightning Source. Mm -hmm to talk about that and then we're going to talk about marketing using social media for marketing. In the afternoon we're going to have <coughs> a panel discussion that will again cover various um, aspects. It's a very exciting program uh, and again the date is March the 19th and um, we're just we're very excited about it. We're very excited to have the foundation help sponsor the event. We're excited to have Ingram help sponsor the event. And um, the library, Bill can touch on this a little bit. The library has a very rich history with helping out local authors. And tell us a little bit about how that started. Um, a group called the Council for the Written Word worked with the library and basically what we did was a lot of research. Mm -hmm. We established a database, bibliography, of any author who had ever lived in Williamson County who had written and published at least one book. Mm -hmm. And right now that total, I think, is almost 500. When we started, the first issue we printed was 98. And uh, it has grown. And we're still adding authors and adding, adding new titles mm -hmm. to established authors. Margaret helps catalog some of those. <laughs> <laughs> so, in Bill, speaking of local authors and local books, you have brought us something that you wanted to share with us. Tell us about your new book. Oh, it's uh, Main Street Philosopher. Uh, it's a collection of stories of Main Street, uh, downtown Franklin. It's sort of a biography of my 52 years on Main Street and having been on both school boards um, and I had to put some essays in there to validate the philosopher part of it. <laughs> Usually most references to my being a philosopher has been pretty much in jest but I, I've sort of this should validate any question about it. And uh, if someone wants to purchase it what would be the best way? Probably track me down at Meredith's. Um, That's his second home. Right. I have a downtown <laughs> office there. Uh, Landmark has it. Um, there are even copies at Handy Hardware. Okay. And it's available on Amazon. So. Well, very good. Thank you both for joining us today. And again, the program date is March the 19th. So we'll be putting out uh, registration information on our website, WCPLTN, very soon. And thanks again, both of you, Bill Thank and Margaret. Thank you Margaret. for letting us come. We'll be right back. Welcome back. In our Save the Date segment, I'm very happy to have with us Sonia Jackson, Community Impact Manager with the Williamson County United Way, and M. Cashin, Community Impact Associate with the United Way, and they're going to be here to talk to us about the all-important FIDA program and tax season. Hello. Hello. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you now, for having us. Now, I say us. tax season, mm -hmm. and people just like, ah. But you guys can help make it a lot easier. Mm -hmm. So, Sonia, tell us a little bit about the FIDA program. What well, VITA stands for Volunteer Income Tax Assistance. So all our volunteers are certified through the IRS. So they go through training. Uh, we have workshops and labs to help them get prepared to do the taxes. They do it for free. So we do ask the public to, you know, be mindful of that, that they're giving their time. But we do try to get people in and get them out in a timely fashion. And it saves them an average of maybe 200 to $400 of having to pay that cost having to get their taxes. Yeah. yeah. That's great. Well, Em, they, <clears throat> they are very de dedicated volunteers. I have mm -hmm. seen yeah. it from them coming uh -huh. at the library. So what are some of the other locations? You're at the main library. Where other locations are you? We're also at the, uh, the branch in Fairview, and we're also at the 50 Ford in College Grove. 
and we're also at GraceWorks Ministries. Now, um, Sonia, how does one qualify to be able to have their taxes done through this program? Well, the great thing with the IRS, they set the income level. So each year they increase it because they're trying to get more and more people oh, to have access thing. of yeah. it. Yeah. So this year it's $62,000 or less. So if you have a household income that's both incomes combined mm -hmm. or independent of $62,000 or less, then you qualify. That's now, great. I will say complicated tax returns are out of our scope of being able to do, but we can do the basic to advance. Um, you know, if you have your own business, uh, 1099s, miscellaneous, if mm -hmm. you're contracted, W-2s, mm -hmm. we can do those. Mm -hmm. um, what we can't do is rental property or farming. Oh. And a lot of stocks, stocks and, you know, stocks and bonds can get a little more advanced. Yeah. So we Because you start talking about either. dividends and mm -hmm. all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Well, that's good. Um, what is the, how does one register to come to the library and have their taxes done? Sonia, I'll let you okay. answer that one. Well, first we have an appointment line that we ask them to call, and that's the 615-830-7940. Um, we do have, we try to get back to f messages if you know no one's there to answer the phone within 24 hours, typically. Uh, from there, we'll go through a list of things that you have to have. Mm -hmm. So for one, we do ask if you make that income level, mm -hmm. which is the $62,000, then okay, that's check one, you qualify. Mm -hmm. Then we ask you to bring in social security cards and photo ID is mm -hmm. a must. We get a lot of people who say, I don't have it. Mm -hmm. Well, you have to have it, because mm -hmm. keep in mind, this is how the IRS regulates and cut down fraud. Mm -hmm. So we're mandated to check for that social security card and photo ID. Mm -hmm. And then, um, is there anything else? Well, we do also accept walk-ins at some locations. Do. I don't know if you want to mention that. But it's also, Em, it's it's a good thing to go ahead and call ahead of time. It is because I can't think of anything much more frustrating than to go and think you're going to get your taxes done, and then oh, I don't have this piece of paper, or I don't right. have this ID, this ID information, and so I could. You know, it is best to call, even mm -hmm. though you yes. guys do take walk-ins. Yeah. We do. Appointments preferred. Yes, <laughs> yes, exactly. And they are prioritized. Appointments go first. So, you know, walk-ins can. We understand some people can't make appointments, but we will stress that on Mondays at the library from 9 to 12 is specifically for walk-ins. Okay. All right, tell us some of the other times at the library. Well, we're at the libraries on Wednesday from 7.30, from, I'm sorry, from 3.30 to 7.30 p.m. And then we're there at Saturdays um, from 9 to 1. Mm -hmm. we'll be, our last appointment is at about 11.55 because we try to clear out by one. Um, we do have at the library in Fairview, it's 9 to 1 as well. And Grace Works are Tuesdays and Thursdays from 9 to 4 p.m. And then College Grove is from 9 to 12 on Thursdays. And I mentioned tax season. M, you guys are there actually through April 14th, right? 15. It falls 15th, on a Friday yeah. this year, and so we, oh, can't, okay. we can't get around it. So we'll be there <laughs> up until April 15th. Yeah. And we'll be at the main library on mm -hmm. that Friday. So it's good, too, to come, to come early because as the season yes. progresses, it's going to get more and more crowded. It is. But one thing I would love to stress is that that health care um, anyone who's been through the marketplace to uh -huh. receive health care coverage, you do have to have your Form 1095A. That is crucial. Um, we have had a lot of people who come in and said they haven't received it yet, and mm -hmm. we're not able to pr process that tax return without that form. Because that's verification of what has been what you have paid mm -hmm. and all that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, that makes, that makes yeah. sense. So see there again, it's good to call and make sure yes. you have all your right. paperwork in order. <laughs> Well, thank you, Em, and thank you, Sonia, for being with yes, us. Thank you for and us. it's it is good to know that we can make the United Way can help us make tax season a little less stressful. Anyway. That's right. We're here. <laughs> <laughs> thank you again, and we'll be right back. Welcome back. In our special events segment, I'm pleased to have with me uh, special collections librarian Jason Gavin. And he'll be here to talk to us about our February, our special February exhibit. Welcome, Jason. Thank you for having me. Thanks for joining us again. Mm -hmm. You've been here with us several times on several different topics. Yes, a few times. Uh, tell us about this special February African-American exhibit. 
I'll be happy to. Um, of course, we, we do an exhibit every year in February uh, that uh, Miss Thelma Battle usually puts together from her collection of photographs. And in past years, she's put together a theme for every year. She's done um, so many so many to choose from uh, at this point. She's done religion one year. She did politics one year. Sports Sports, yes, yeah, she did. Um, migration. I thought the, the great migration one that she did. Was that last that year? That was last year. It was it very was interesting. And she did fabulous. one uh, for the sesquicentennial on Civil War, mm -hmm. uh, African-American participants in the Civil War from Williamson County specifically. So that, that you have to do some digging to find that kind of information. <laughs> but this year, um, it was kind of special because being 2016, it's it's the 20th anniversary of the first exhibit that she did. That's amazing. Way back in 1996. That's amazing. And so we wanted to do something kind of kind of special to to honor that. So we, the library ourselves, uh, put together a sort of 20-year retrospective of um, past exhibits. We mm -hmm. pick and choose from different exhibits that she's done in the past. So there's not a general theme this year, and uh, she didn't even put it together. Uh, my uh, favorite thing that's happened so far in, in, uh, with the exhibit is the day that she came to see what we did and, and looked around because she had no idea. She hadn't seen it yet or been no, involved. because usually in the past she's been very hands-on there very much so, on yeah. a regular basis so she would see it. Yes. I bet that was interesting. Oh, it was great. And she was, she was, I'm very uh, happy to say she was pleased. She oh, really good. enjoyed it. Uh, outside the Special Collections Department we have uh, covers, almost all the covers from the various exhibits she's done over the years. And uh, to kind of stand back and see how many exhibits that have been done over 20 years, you, I think you kind of she kind of didn't realize how much work she's put uh -huh. into it over the time. So that was uh, that was really wonderful. So where um, where in the library are these exhibits? Uh, it starts off. Uh, you'll see a, a big uh, display when you first walk in, and then there's display cabinets right next to the elevator mm -hmm. on the first and the second floor. Mm -hmm. And then uh, it finishes up in the special collections department. We have them uh, all around the the reading room in the department, and then it finishes in the Williamson room, right around the corner from the from the special collections department. Uh, all told, I think there are 130 <laughs> images. I was going to say, so when you come to see it, you need to spend, you need to plan some time plan so like, you yeah. can kind of really enjoy all the yes. all the different pictures. Now, I know it was a process to go through and select these. So tell us a little bit about that. Uh, it was the collection itself is so wonderful, and by this time we have almost 3,000 images that she's. Pick. So the the only difficult part, uh, as far as choosing what we were going to display, was narrowing it down. We were shooting for a hundred, and we wound up with a hundred and thirty. So <laughs> I think that's that's pretty good. <clears throat> but there's so many wonderful images. It was uh, very easy to just start going through boxes. Myself and and some of the other library employees that have always helped every year with this exhibit, uh, just start picking pictures and. Mm -hmm. um, and it, I didn't pick them all myself. I had a lot of help. If it was just me, I think there would have been uh, a, an exhibit of just babies and children. There's some really <laughs> cute pictures of, of kids. Yeah, there's there. a lot of those, too. <laughs> there are, yeah. <laughs> so um, tell us, uh, and then the, the exhibit's going to be up through the whole month of February. Yes, all through February it'll be up. And you can come and, and walk through any time the library is open. Right. So, um, and we suggest that you come and do that because one of the things that I think is important about this event is that it's very unique. Yes. You know, the library's been doing this for 20 years now, but there's no other exhibit in the area that's like this, and it makes it very special. Yeah, then that specifically reflects that, that community that is just Williamson County. Um, it, it is very unique. At the, one of the most unique things that we've got in the library in terms of uh, collection. One of the things that we wanted to briefly talk about was also Thelma's collection of funeral programs. Yes. So tell us about that. She's done not just uh, collecting pictures over the years, but she's done so much work for the library. Another thing that she's collected is uh, almost 2,000 African-American funeral programs. 
Um, these are important uh, mm -hmm. genealogy-wise. Um, mm -hmm. If you go back far enough, you won't find obituaries for African Americans in the newspapers. Whereas a lot of times I'll get calls for people just say, I'm, I'm looking for an obituary. It was in the Review Appeal on this date in 1911. But uh, you can't do that if you uh, have an African American family that you're looking for. So funeral programs can be really important for genealogy. And uh, she's collected quite a bit, and uh, we've got them all scanned at this point, and we're hoping to, uh, to kick off sometime next year uh, the Thelma Battle Collection of African American Funeral Programs as a website that'll be browsable for the, for the public. Uh, the other thing I love about that is she collected the majority of them, but once we got a certain number of them, many members of the community started to bring in what they had as well and contribute yeah. to it. They'd so. heard about what she was doing and they wanted right. to contribute. And it is it really is a rich source for genealogical material. It is, yeah, and a unique source, very much so. So, and we do a lot of different and special things in our special collections department. Yes. <laughs> so how can someone find out more about what we do? Well, uh, the most fun way is just to stop by and, and visit us. And uh, we love to talk to people, especially if they've never been in there. Uh, we're on the second floor of the library, kind of all the way in the back. We're open uh, Monday through Saturday. The only day we're not there is Sunday uh, till 5.30. And, uh, or you can visit our website. Uh, we've got a lot of great resources on there. Uh, feel free to stop by any time. We also have some great classes. We have the introductionancestry.com class mm -hmm. that we do every month. Very popular. It has uh, been very popular indeed. We always have a good time doing it. So stop by or visit our website, wcpotn.org. Mm -hmm. And thank you so much, Jason, for joining us today. Thank you for having me. And we'll be right back. Thank you for spending part of your day with us. We are happy and grateful to present this program to you once a month. It is one of the best ways to quickly learn about events in your community and about your library. Please join us again. And remember, you can always send us comments and suggestions about our show to notjustbooks at williamson-tn.org. We would love to hear from you. Special thanks goes to Williamson County Parks and Recreation Director Gordon Hampton, Bill Peach, local writer and philosopher, Margaret Brown, technical services librarian at the Williamson County Public Library, Williamson County United Way, Sonia Johnson, community impact manager, and M. Cashin, community impact associate. Also, Jason Gavin, Williamson County special collections librarian. And don't forget to follow us on Facebook. All you have to do is go to facebook.com slash WCPLTN. Let us know what you think about our program and services. You can also follow us on Twitter at twitter.com slash wcpltn.org. And don't forget, until next time, explore your world and read. library has a Star Wars club. Have you seen The Force Awakens? Come and chat about it and the other movies in the series. Bonus, you can dress up as your favorite Star Wars character, play Star Wars games, and chat all about things Star Wars. Led by our teen Star Wars expert.